Welcome again. In this brief lecture, I'll talk about another postmodernist concept that comes up pretty frequently and people talk about it, and that concept is metafiction. Now, if you look at it literally, metafiction basically means anything that is beyond fiction. But within postmodernism, metafiction happens when an author either points to the artificiality of the text, which is very close to self-reflexivity, but also, in my experience, when reality or historical reality and fiction kind of merge. And so that part of the novel, though even though it's part of the novel itself and no one tells us it's a preface or an introduction, it is metafictional because it is not maybe part of the plot, but it is inserted within the story and has an impact on it. How does it impact the story? I mean, let me give you two examples. Uh, the opening of uh, Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five, if you start reading it, you will think that it's a preface because it starts with, I have always wanted to write a book about Dresden. And then it goes on to explain why, and then suddenly you are in the story. Right, So the opening lines of the novel are metafictional. They point to that I will, I've always wanted to create this novel and here is this novel, right? And in this sense, then maybe the metafiction fictional part of the novel is while the process of telling the story is also maybe informing us that this has been on the author's mind or this has been a prime concern and that's why he has decided to write this story. And maybe it enhances our understanding of Slaughterhouse Five. But since it's not a fictional part of the novel, we would call it metafictional. The second example that I give is that is from uh, Salman Rushdie's Shame, um, a novel about Pakistan. And as you read the novel, you will realize that without any warning, at different places in the novel, there are these snippets. They are not contextualized. They are just a third-person voice that is narrating actual experiences of someone having visited Pakistan. And they are interspersed throughout the novel. And I ask myself that question, what does that do? Obviously, it's not part of the story. These are observations of a third-person observer. Could be Rushdi, but I don't need to read that. But then I realize that what those realistic metafictional insertions do, they are juxtaposed against the fictional part of the novel, which is itself, the novel is bizarre. It's magic realism. A lot of crazy things are happening there. But if you juxtapose that part of the plot of the novel with those metafictional aspects, you realize that the message that it sends to the reader is that, hey, this is a work of fiction, right? which Rishti points out in the novel itself. But the actual reality narrated by this disembodied third-person voice, the actual reality is even more terrible. So what that metafiction then ends up doing within the body of the knowledge is trying it, it convinces the reader that this fictional account may represent a terrible picture of Pakistan, but these realistic instances inserted at different places kind of tell us that while the real life Pakistan is even darker and more treacherous than what is represented as fiction in this story. So these are two instances of metafiction, but to conclude any time a novel or a story inserts something that is not part of the logical, functional world of that novel. It's, it could be a historical account. It could be some observations. That part of the novel can be called metafictional. There is another beautiful novel, Michelle Cliff's A Bank, in which while telling the story, she inserts metafictional parts, which is the actual historical snippets. And they serve an important function. For example, in one scene, she's staging the family sitting to the table, the savage family, and they are drinking tree. And as the father reaches to put sugar in his tea, 
she in her next vignette gives us the history of the cane farms, right? How many slaves did it take to plow how much land, to plant sugar cane, to harvest it, to make it into sugar? And as you then move into the fictional narrative, suddenly you realize that that act of putting sugar in his teacup makes Mr. Savage complicit in that process of exploitation, even though it's a harmless act. So in that sense, then, metafiction is augmenting our understanding of a simple act. So there are so many other purposes metafiction serves, but these are some of the examples uh, that I can um, give you right now. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me, and I will try to address them. And I will also add below this lecture a brief handout, which is a more formal explanation step by step of metafiction itself. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.